Hey guys, Dane here again, based at Splash Cast House in Chiba, Japan, at wonderful Hebera Beach there behind me. Today, I'm going to give you a look at my true kit boat. I just finished rigging it for the very first time in its fishing setup mode. I'm so stoked with the outcome, can't wait to get on the water, but I thought I'd give you a little breakdown of a few of the features. Here we go, guys. So, first up, here it is. The um, full drawn back view. Got her on the wood deck. Um, it's just a dry run today. Um, so, but yeah, she looks absolutely fantastic. So excited. Um, it's always good to do dry runs before you go out on the ocean. Check everything, make sure um, everything works how you want it to work. First time when you get it out there, there's always small issues that you have to work through. Um, definitely don't go out there just to fish the first time. If you end up fishing, that's just lucky, I think. Um, but go out there to finish all the issues and go through them all. Um, anyway, I'll give you the full rundown. So the boat, 2.8 meter, true kit, um, inflatable catamaran, with that beautiful open front bow. Um, in this setup, I'm gonna run it with a two horsepower. So just a small engine, because I want it to fit in my little K car. Um, deflated and then um, also inflated on the roof as they set up so I'm going to check all of that as well so super light super mobile setup and I've gone as light a setup as I can with all the gear and all the rigs so let's run you through it so first of all you'll notice on the back um, here I've got two um, Rosilla um, oh, sorry uh, uh, rail blazer is a railblazer um, fishing rod holders and they're actually attached into the transom bolted through so you'll see there so they come out real easy one either side for the balance there we go and then I've also got one more on the side on the left side pontoon I'll take you around to have a look here we go railblazer these are great little uh, rod holders. Not super cheap, but they do work really, really well. So rods obviously go in and out really easily. Um, and uh, you can also, uh, obviously that's locked down, and you can close this up if you're trolling. So basically the rod has something to pull against. Super good little setup. Next big noticeable thing everyone's gonna see is obviously I've got my Garmin. Um, fish finder now this is a Garmin Striker 4 plus they don't really have the 4 plus CV out in Japan yet um, so I went with the 4 plus instead of very very capable fish finder probably the best one on the market for the money in Japan they're gonna cost you about 200 bucks a little bit more expensive than the USA um, now I've got cable running down to the transducer which is going to be mounted on the back. Now I didn't want to put any more screw holes in the transom so I've got mine mounted on a piece of wood and then I just use a G clamp to G clamp it down each time. It's more than enough strength. You'll see I've got some rubber bands and that's where I run the transducer cable through and then I change my bolt out for a little GoPro one. So I can just slot that in each time, unscrew it nice and easily um, for when I want to put it back in its box kit, as you can see. Uh, this true kit boat, I got um, the guy to put in these two eye rings um, so I could use it for towing. This one here, this clip, I used to clip onto my motor as a most motor safe. So if for some reason the motor works its way off the transom and falls in the water, this bungee should give me a bit of time to grab the motor. Okie dokie. So you'll see that I run round to the Garmin and where do I have my power source? Uh, this first center box I call is my basically my main tackle and kit box. Uh, it's a double sided. Um, box so you can open it either side which means the guy sitting at the front fishing can access it this side or me sitting down the back can also access it from the other side just by opening the other clips really cool design um, you'll see in here so top tray I've 
example, my sort of little lures and jigs, main jigs, um, poppers and whatnots in there. Um, and then I've got little boxes with sort of uh, assist hooks and whatnots. And, uh, and then all my little um, split rings and eye rings. I'm going to give you a bit, a bit of a rundown on my fishing gear another time but let's go back to the Garmin box so let's just pull that out if you look in the bottom of this box what I've got here is I've basically got my power box um, and in there so it's double sealed the main box and the next box and in there I have my battery fully charged the power cable just going through um, blue tack sealed so I can get the cables in and out easily and then a few just sort of hardware bits, screwdriver if I ever need an extra G clamp, if I want to change where the transducer is, instruction manuals. And I've just got some sponge at the bottom, makes everything sort of not rattle around in that, that box. So that's the transducer, uh, which goes in the bottom there, nice and neat. I've got my fluoro in there. I think that's a 60 pound fluoro. So that's that. Just a, one small hole. Again, I use this sort of blue tack stuff to just, just tack the hole closed to stop tons of water going through if I get splash on my deck. Um, it's more than enough, um, to be honest, but it also allows me just to pull that off really quickly um, when, I wanna, when I wanna bring the cables back through. Um, it's just your standard blue tack. There we go, put this back in. There we go, a few towels and rags. Put that back down. This can obviously also double up as a seat if you want to sell that. Generally I sit on the pontoon and fish and then one other person on the other pontoon and fish. So that's that. Um, you'll see the oars are nicely stowed away. We have, um, True Kit have these really robust um, Velcro tabs on the inside one and two which allows you to store the oars really nicely um, and tight so they don't get in the way obviously it's legal that you need to carry them in Japan at all times then at the front here we're just running my Thermos 55 um, cooler box it's also a bait box um, basically I just use that for everything I also actually stick my anchor in there when I'm Heading out on the water, I don't care the anchor getting all fished up. That's absolutely fine. Um, generally, I don't use the anchor when I'm fishing. Um, I just uh, drift in the wind and then motor back where I need to be. But it's, it doubles up as the anchor bin and the safety flag um, bin. That's that. You'll see also at the front here, I haven't put it on actually, um, but this one here I use for um, this little port, I've got a GoPro boom that comes off um, which allows me to do those videos of myself fishing or just trolling or just going around the boat. That's it. Um, this is the safety rope at the front of the boat. Normally when I'm fishing I actually generally tend not to have this on. It comes off real easy um, just because if hooks and what whatnots catch in there. Um, so I generally don't run that but I run that when I'm um, using it for diving and uh, foiling and other things where people are going to get in and out of the boat a lot of the time. That's pretty much it for the boat. Um, actually, I will tell you about the rods if you'd like to know. Um, so I love the Daiwa, Daiwa Catalina range. Probably start with the smallest one first, which is here. So I'm running a Daiwa. This one is my Daiwa Catalina 3500. I've got PE3 I think on there and 60 pound fluoro running off a short jerk. I don't know if you can see that, yeah, short jerk um, TRV55 slash 4. This rod really, it's like kind of the light rig. So I rigged this one up with sort of 40 to 80 gram jigs. Um, and it's got a really nice short jerk action um, or slow jigging action. Super fun, the rod is just a beast. It will take pretty much anything. Super, super heavy jitty handle on it, but just a really short 
reach on it. And that reel, these, these Catalina reels are the smoothest I've ever used. I have used the Sortigas, I like them, but I think they're heavy um, for what I want and uh, just double the price. Um, so these Catalinas, this is the older model, the newer model, like brown in color, um, are super good. Moving over to, we'll go to this one, the other jigging rod we've got, let's just bust it out for you. So starting off, we've got a Catalina 5000 here, um, running PE4 on this one, um, braid and 80 pound fluoro. Um, and uh, this, this, this reel is basically it's the same as the 4500, but the spool is, is bigger. Um, and I use this for my heavy jigs, so anything between 80 to 200 grams. Generally, I only go up to, we'll use jigs up to 150. Um, but again, a beautiful reel, real smooth, catch a 80 kilo tuna on that if you really want to. Um, I'd love to, yet to, shall we say. Um, but beautiful rig. And just actually the um, Daiwa Blast J62MS um, rod. Really nice, really stout rod. Again, will take anything you, you throw at it. Um, it's got a really thin little narrow handle, this one. Um, so the rod itself is, is really light. Um, it almost feels that the blast um, isn't going to be as strong as that short jerk. Um, but so I'd say the simile, but the action is very different. Um, just the extra length in this one just allows those jigs to work perfect. Last one up we have on the boat um, as it's sort of everyone's favourite rod, especially the kids, but we don't use it too often, is the Dio Catalina Casting Hiramesa 79S. Um, much longer rod designed for casting so as we're cruising around this is the rod that we have set up with top lures and poppers um, big giant minnows things like that that uh, if we see the fish on the surface attacking or the birds are out diving um, get in there with your caster and cast this thing fast and hard um, and hopefully catch a monster um, this one here um, we actually have the slightly, it's the same reel, uh, let's see if I can show you, so it's the Catalina 4500. Now the difference between the 4500 and the 5000, it's not much, it's really just the spool. So the spool on this one, um, we run again P4 um, and uh, an 80 pound fluoro leader. Um, but we just don't, we, we prefer the uh, 5000 on the jigging rig than the casting rig. Uh, but this one in the hand, when you, get a, when you get a big fish, that rod just feels solid. You've got a lot of leverage because um, you're generally going to be on the fish for a long time, that's for sure. So those are the three rods set up that we got. So all Dio Catalina reels um, and then a, um, a blaster Catalina and a short jerk. That's it with the fishing gear. Like I say again, I'll, I'll give you a detailed blog about the different jigs and stuff that I use in another video. But that's it from me for today. That's a quick look at the True Kit setup and its fishing format for me in Japan. We like fishing um, big sort of game fish, which are yellowtail, hiramasa in Japanese. Um, and uh, other similar fish, big Spanish mackerel and whatnot. So hope to get a few videos in the, in the boat for you in the coming weeks. Uh, thanks ever so much guys for watching. Have a beautiful day. It is absolutely gorgeous here in Hebra. And as always, remember, if you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comments below. And we always are grateful for those people who subscribe to our videos and like them. That helps us with what we do. Thanks guys, enjoy.